All right, video number three for my sports class, dietary fat. So let's look at that triglyceride. You got three fatty acids. They can be saturated. They can be monounsaturated, slightly crooked, or they can be polyunsaturated. And, and the truth is, in nature, we're eating mostly these. What we have to eat are the polyunsaturated, ones that have an omega-6 type of configuration, crooked at the sixth um, carbon in the chain, or crooked at the third, omega-3. And side note, the omega-6s have two double bonds, and the omega-3s have three double bonds, although omega-3s in fish have four, five, and six double bonds. The first one's at carbon number three, but the other ones are all over the place. Let's look at the food supply. This is really how you think about this. We are eating triglycerides. If you are eating triglycerides from coconut oil, remember they're made up of three dangling chains of carbon, they are all overwhelmingly saturated, long chains of carbon with no double bond. Coconut oil stacks the best of any food fat that you can eat. It's solid at room temperature. It's not, you don't need to refrigerate it. It has a very long shelf life because when you don't have a double bond, those kind of fats, they don't really go bad. It's just carbon. It's like, it's like made of diamond. And the opposite would be something like flaxseed oil. All those triglycerides floating around in the oil, the vast majority of them have at least two chains that are crooked, unsaturated. And a lot of them, look at this. This is the copper colored. They're not, they're not one double bond. They're not two double bond. There are three double bonds, omega-3 fats, right? That's why flaxseed is an oil. Safflower oil, corn oil. The blue is omega-6. The vast majority of the chains dropping down in the triglyceride happen to be two double bonds, omega-6 fats. This should explain the thickness of every type of fat you eat. The more saturated, the more stackable. You've got these ones in the middle, the olive oil, the canola, and the peanut. They get of a lot of chains. They're not saturated, but they're not polyunsaturated. They just have one double bond. They're crooked, but they're not super crooked. That's why olive oil is kind of thick, right? It's not, it's not a thin oil. It's, it's oozy. You get down into the safflower, the corn oil. These pour like water. They're, they're very liquidy. They don't have a lot of omega-9 uh, or monounsaturated. They have a lot of omega-6s. In fact, this is what you eat a lot of because food producers use a lot of safflower, sunflower, and corn oil and soybean to cook and make all your food. If you're looking for omega-3s and a decent source of omega-3, which, by the way, is essential, look, you've got canola, soybean, walnut, flaxseed, fatty fish, not any kind of fish, fatty fish. You can add chia seeds to that. You can add hemp to that. And there's some other ones out there. You know, there's some other types of, 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 of other fatty sources out there. Avocado is not on the list. Most nuts are not a good source of omega-3. Almonds are not, are, not, are not. When you see in the literature, on TV, on the internet, on TikTok, wherever, and people are promoting omega-3, eat more omega-3s. Folks, they're lying. They're not, they don't really, they, they're saying eat more omega-3s. I'm telling you, just eat enough of them because look at your food supply. The copper is the omega-3 and you have to eat those foods to get it. Butter's got a little bit, not a lot. Um, by the way, butter is mostly food you don't need, fat you don't need. You don't need the saturated, you can make that. You don't need the mono, you can make that. Look, that's what you need. Isn't butter kind of funny? It doesn't have a lot of essential fat. I cook with canola oil at home because there's what I need, omega-3, omega-6. You could, you could use flaxseed oil, although it doesn't last very long, and we'll talk about that in a second, but um, you're better off just... If you, if you want to use flaxseed, buy the seed, blend it, make a meal, use it immediately in whatever you're cooking, right? That's the problem with the food supply. There's not a lot of omega-3s out there. We live in an omega-6 world because, again, the blue ones, safflower, sunflower, corn, and soybean, you may not be using them, but every other food producer and kitchen on the planet does. They're affordable, and they're a good source of omega-6, which we need but not a very good source of omega-3s. 
Does that make sense? I think it does. I think it does. Now, the problem with unsaturated, even though we have to eat them, omega-3 and omega-6, is the more double bonds you have in a fat, the more easily it breaks down when exposed to light, heat, air, metal, whatever. And food producers have known this forever, right? That, you know, corn oil doesn't last forever. It'll actually go bad in your house within like six to nine months. What you can do, though, is get rid of all these double bonds. You can, right? There, they just need to have the double bond broken. Let's go back real quick. They need that double bond broken. There it is. And have hydrogen stuck back on. So what you can do is force hydrogen onto this molecule. And that's exactly what they do. And many of you know the term, you know the word. It's called hydrogenation. You take hydrogen, you slam it onto these fats, and you get rid of the double bonds, not all of them, most of them, and you make something that's mostly unsaturated a lot less unsaturated. Shortening, which many of you have seen or used in cooking, it looks like grease, is made from corn oil. They, had, they add enough hydrogen to make it thick enough to become like rendered fat. Um, and because you're getting rid of all those double bonds, the shelf life, the ability of shortening to stay on the grocery store shelf goes up. It's not refrigerated when you buy Crisco. It makes food, saturated fats make for crispier foods and more crunchier foods, right? Um, there's a ton of benefits. The problem is the trans fats, which we don't like, can be made during the hydrogenation chemistry process. So foods that generally have hydrogenated fats, you can read them in the food label, they may say they don't have any trans fats on the nutrition facts label, but they can be there in very small quantities. So the, the key is always, whenever you're buying things like ramen or, 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 or powdered creamer, look for the word hydrogenated or semi-hydrogenated. No, it was a liquid. They took hydrogen. They tried to make this. This is your typical monounsaturated we find in olive oil. And sometimes they make this. It's called a trans fat. It's, it's, a, it's an unsaturated fatty chain of carbons that's straight. It's not supposed to be straight. It's supposed to be crooked. It's supposed to be crooked, but it ends up being straight, and these are really bad for the body. Okay, I'm going to end there.